here today to talk about how to create a template in IPA. What we mean by template is that we have assumptions in IPA that you can save out so that when you open the file again and you have a similar type project, let's say that you're working on assets with a value of 80,000 to 150, and let's say that it's in the Midwest somewhere, that range can be canned and you can use those assumptions and analytics over and over and over for those general areas, especially if you work in areas where you have winterization and you have winterization costs and stuff like that. So we're gonna show you how to create a template and how to use that template every time you come in to create a new file. So right now I have the file manager open for IPA. I have a few folders and files already in here. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call that folder templates, okay? I'm not gonna do anything in here now, but I'm gonna leave it there uh, for, uh, for the future. So what I wanna do is I wanna, I wanna open a new project and this new project, again, I'm gonna call template. In fact, I'm gonna call this template, let's just call it Michigan AD to 150 okay once we have that file i'm going to go ahead and go in i'm going to open that file all right so once we're in we uh can start our file and let's just call let's just call this template uh we'll call the street name template uh we'll call it template one okay if i can spell right here um and we don't really have to put anything in, in any of these. Uh, probably need some numbers in here. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna make this template a note template, okay? Um, we're we're just gonna put some some general numbers in here because we don't really need any for the template, okay? Then we're gonna click on analyze. Oh, forgot to click whether it's vacant or occupied. Always click occupied if you don't know. Once we're in the template, what we really want to do is click on this assumptions button up here and it takes us to the assumptions down below. And once we're in here, we can set these assumptions for our budget, for our exit strategies, for the time frames that um, are associated with everything. Currently, we have everything set to assets that range anywhere from 80 to about 150. In, in the Midwest somewhere. We also have uh, winterization in there, which may not be something that everybody needs, but we have it in there anyway. We, When we scroll back up to the top, you'll see the direct correlation between those and what's coming in here. So for instance, winterization, when we analyze everything, it'll take that number and pop it in to the winterization direct cost. Now, if you didn't need that for whatever reason, you can just click this button, and it'll it'll take it out and erase it. So, you know, let's say that you're not in an area that doesn't need it, you definitely wanna click that button and take it off of your direct costs. Um, and the same thing goes for every, every one of these items. So once you have your budget set, let's say we wanted to set one that was for non-winterization, I'm gonna make that zero. Cash for keys, let's say that 1500 sounds pretty steep. I only want to offer a thousand. Okay, so uh, we can change that. Attorney foreclosure costs. Let's say you're in a, a different state that's not going to require a whole lot of attorney fees. Maybe you only want 2500. Attorney eviction. Maybe you don't have any evictions there. Maybe it's going to be more. You know, let's just go ahead and make it more. Preserve is additional costs. Uh, we have it at set at 1800. That just gives us a little bit of cushion, but you can set it at whatever you want to preserve the property. Let's say that's too much for you. We'll, we'll do 800 on a smaller property, right? Let's say that you have, you're an agent yourself or you have an agent that'll do uh, the property, sell it at, at less of a percentage. You can change those percentages here. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it rehab uh, on the rentals if when we're calculating the exit strategies we have two things we have a rehab on a fix and flip and we have rehab on rentals so if you wanted to calculate the rental separate from the rehab uh, or the fix and flip you would enter that uh, information here and this would give you 
This would basically separate out the two numbers. If you wanted to uh, put a management fee in there, you can include that. That could be zero, that could be whatever you choose. I'm gonna go ahead and zero that out for now. Let's say that you had a, a vacancy rate of that, that was higher than 7%. Let's say it was 15%. You can add that in there to kind of see what that looks like. And again, this is what your default would be every time you run your projects. I would recommend keeping it somewhere around seven, but it could be whatever you want. And then you have your foreclosure minimum required return on investment for your foreclosure sale. So what is your minimum required return on investment? I'm saying 15%. If you want it more, you can put 20%. This is just saying, I don't want to accept anything less than 20%. And if you're going to reperform the note, how long are you going to hold it? What percentage of the, the UPB do you want to sell it at? And then you can enter in any kind of past due amounts collected here as well. If you're going to flip the note, you can sell the note at a percentage of UPB. You can sell it at 60, 70, 80. A lot of times people are selling it at 75 percent of UPB and they're holding it for maybe anywhere from three to 12 months. I'm going to put 80 here and I'm going to put 12 here. I'm just going to leave it at three actually. So let's say we're done with our assumptions and we like what we have. I'm going to go ahead and close this. The way you close this file is you just click on the X up here. It'll close it and it'll ask you to save. Save changes, yes. And then you've got to wait for the file window to pop back up as it saves. So the file window popped up. Now you just save that template file. So if I wanted to, I can move this template file now, um, come over to move, and I want to move it into my templates folder. So every time I go to my templates folder, that template will be there. Okay. So let's say that I have five properties that I want to search. Uh, and, you know, I, I just opened up IPA. So I can come into my templates folder. I can select my template, I can hit clone, right? And I can give it an address, whatever that address is. And now you see it here. So obviously I don't want that address to be in my template folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that. Let's say that address was in Michigan. I'm gonna go ahead and move that to my Michigan folder. Go back to my Michigan folder and you'll see addresses sitting there. So that's how you can use the template to start off your, your, your file. Again, you go into the templates folder real quick. You clone, you clone the template, you give it an address name and you move it to whatever folder you want to move it to, or you can leave it in that folder. It's completely up to you. In this case, we put it in our Michigan folder and that's how you create a template in IPA. Sean, did you want to add anything? Actually, you covered everything. If you have any questions with any of this, uh, go ahead and email, email us at uh, support at rose.com. Thanks for your time.